Hey all here, OS Reviews. As the Samsung Galaxy Fold and the Huawei Mate X are around the corner, today we're doing a retro throwback look at the LG G Flex. This was among one of the first flexible phones to hit the market, along with the Samsung Galaxy Edge, and in this case it was a bendable phone with an OLED panel that could actually flex if you removed it from the phone's body. The phone's body though is still rather malleable, and uh, you can see it has a pretty dramatic curve to it, even more so if you turn it over, and LG claimed that if you actually sat on the phone, it could still bend and survive. You can push down on it, but it's not really meant to do that on a daily basis, of course. However, they also engineered the battery inside to be bendable with lots of small ridges connecting together to survive those uh, movements. So being a phone that's now over six years old, this was released in 2013, I think the G Flex truly was ahead of its time, and in a sense, it was pretty underrated. It included a Snapdragon 800 processor, which actually still runs pretty well, as a mid-tier CPU today, along with all the essentials including NFC, an infrared blaster for controlling TVs, Wi-Fi, GPS, Bluetooth, 4G, LTE, so on and so forth. Another interesting thing about the G Flex was that it had a very unique construction. Now, it looks like brushed metal, but it's actually made out of plastic. However, there's good reason for it. It's actually using the same technology as on some cars, where there are micro capsules of liquid inside of the plastic, so that if you scratch it, it claims to be self healing so that the capsules will rupture and the liquid will fill in the scratches and in just a few minutes you'll get a completely flush surface. Starting with the design, aside from the dramatic curve, this phone is a really big phone. It's a true phablet and measures 6 inches diagonally. It's crazy to think that now in 2019, 6 inches is actually a very average for a smartphone, but keeping in mind that this was actually the older 16 by 9 aspect ratio, the curves here are trying to mitigate because if it was completely flat, it would be even taller as well. So in the hand, the G Flex definitely feels like a really big phone. Uh, otherwise, the panel here is actually a 720p resolution. But that was the price to pay for having a flexible OLED panel that was really new to manufacture at the time. Although the hardware design really is the most interesting thing about this phone, the software is also still kind of fun to look at. It's nowhere near stock, but it's again kind of fun to play around with. You can start tilting and using the accelerometer just from the main lock screen to kind of interact with it ever so slightly. LG also has her knock code where she can double tap two times on the display to turn it off and then twice again to turn the display back on. Of course, back in 2013, fingerprint scanners weren't common, so there is no biometrics built onto this device. Like other OLED panels, contrast is excellent, especially against colors and the background if it's black, just because when it's black, OLED screens actually aren't emitting any pixels at all. We do have virtual keys on the very bottom that take us back home. We can long hold to access multitasking back in Android 4.4 their settings as well as a back key. Now if we revisit the camera first, uh, that's actually not really the forte of the LG G Flex. All the innovation went into I think the display, the way that it's bent towards your eyes makes it feel almost like a small IMAX theater. So the camera pales by comparison. There's no optical image stabilization so you have to stay very still and even though it's 13 megapixels I find the details to be a little bit washed out sometimes. Uh, however it's functional and it's very quick to focus and you have a plethora of different adjustment modes. The interesting ones include a VR panorama mode for you to capture shots. There's also a night mode, which uh, works all right, but it's nowhere close to night vision that we have on the Pixel phones today. Uh, the computational photography power back then was still a lot weaker. Some sample shots here and an example of a nighttime shot. You can see that you get some decent details, but it's definitely, again, nowhere as crisp as on night vision that we have today. It doesn't automatically sharpen up some of the corners, and there's a bit of blurriness. But if you hold still, it's a uh, decent shooter. The display is helping in the sense that it's really large so it makes the images look quite immersive but it's not helping in the sense that it, it is so large that uh, naturally you get to see a lot of the finer details and because the resolution isn't the highest you can definitely make out a bit more of kind of fuzziness around the edges. Typing using the keyboard is another specialty of this phone just because it's so large and wide. Of course if you flip the phone over it becomes even more comfortable to type on with this curved ergonomic uh, experience.
With a 720p panel, there's less pixels for the CPU to push around, and as a result, it's able to still remain pretty smooth and responsive even after all these years. Of course, you do need to zoom in a bit more to make out text legibly because, again, it's not quite as pin sharp. One of the other benefits of having this curved panel is it starts curving upwards the further it gets from your fingers if you're holding it like this, which means it's actually pretty comfortable to just push upwards and swipe to interact with the media. LG's influence is also very strong if we hop into settings where everything is just really colorful, not very similar to modern Android. Unfortunately, updating software isn't one of LG's strong suits, but to be fair, that's not really any manufacturers aside from maybe Google's own phones. And you can always install your own launcher if you want to change up the look of the phone. However, unless you root it, one thing you can't do is you know really update it to a newer security patch. And that's because KitKat in 2019 is just very outdated. So if you're getting this and you are a little bit paranoid about security or for corporate use, then that's definitely a area where this is not going to be as recommended. Now, some other interesting touches on this phone included what's called Q-Slide apps. Similar to Sony's Xperia phones, it's a micro app that allows you to multitask. So if we tap on the calendar here, for example, it opens up and it says you can uh, tap on OK. And now we just have a smaller calendar uh, or, or box for whatever app you have open that uh, floats around the screen, allows you to do a little bit of extra multitasking. LG even implemented a split screen multitasking where you can long hold on the back key to drag two apps open at the same time. And this was long before Android OS natively supported multitasking and made a lot of sense on a really large phone like this. And the phone still remains enjoyable for things like document editing, ebook reading, things like that, doodling, even though it doesn't have a built-in stylus just because of the large display. For general productivity apps, it still does a great job. Even for occasional gaming, it still does all right. And you can definitely install even the latest titles from the Google Play Store without any problems. Uh, that includes even titles like Asphalt 9 and PUBG, just because the Snapdragon 800 really is a super advanced chipset for its time. It will still load those really graphically intensive games. You just have to be a bit more patient. Considering the LG G Flex here in 2019, first of all, the street price, if you look on Amazon or eBay, is going to hover around 150 bucks or even lower. I would say for the price, it's definitely not the cheapest Snapdragon 800 series phone that you can find. Some of its uh, contemporaries or maybe the LG G2 in particular you can find for well under that, sometimes as low as 50 bucks. So if you know budget is your number one priority in terms of pure performance and specs, this uh, is still not going to be the cheapest phone. However, if you do want something interesting, it's definitely a lot cheaper now than its original retail cost of 700, 800 bucks when it was released. This is another instance where LG's technology has withstood the test of time because of how innovative they were, but for whatever reason, they remain just really underrated. In truth, today's foldable phones are a combination of something like the Curacera Echo, the idea that a phone can transform into a phablet by having it fold open, plus the innovation in the LG G Flex's flexible OLED display. Thanks for watching this throwback video here at OS Reviews. This has been the LG G Flex Revisited here in 2019.